All right, everyone, I am in rural Ohio. Let me show you where. See the blue dot? Kind of, uh, I don't know, tucked away there in between Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus. Uh, Dayton's about an hour away. So, uh, relatively close to those big cities, but definitely out in the country. I am in the town of Lynchburg. Actually, it is the village of Lynchburg. In Ohio, law says, or the state's law says, that uh, if there are 5,000 or more people, it's a city. If there are less than 5,000, it's a village. So this is the village of Lynchburg, because there's about 1,500 people here. Now, uh, when something sticks out about a series of towns, uh, I'll mention it. And uh, I wanted to mention that this area, these towns and two counties that I'm visiting, overwhelmingly Republican. Um, we're talking around 80%. Uh, the two counties I'm visiting are Clinton and Highland counties. So uh, I just wanted to make note of that. Anyway, uh, let's see, this town, some of the numbers as I head into downtown. Uh, median age is 30. Uh, gender is 52% female, 48% male. Uh, race is 98% white, 2% Hispanic. Let's see, per capita income, a little over 25000 a year. That's uh, a little less than 500 a week. And the median household income is 57600 That's about 1100 a week. Uh, poverty is low, 9.5%. And the median home values here is 115000 uh, Let me see, I want to pull over real quick. Look, they got a Mountain Dew sign there. That's upside down. That sign might be worth something to a collector, by the way. That's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, another number, crime. Crime is low. 10 incidents per 1,000 people last year. U.S. average is 23. So crime here is about half that. Uh, compared to the rest of the country. Now, the town was founded in 1830. It's named after Lynchburg, Virginia. And uh, something of note here that I'm going to show you is a covered bridge here. That is a historic site. So I'm going to find that. Uh, I'll go find that right now and show that to you. Okay, it's pretty easy to find. Uh, you can see the bridge right in front of me. It is called the Lynchburg Covered Bridge. Uh, it was built in 1870. It's on the National Register. Uh, you can't drive on it anymore. But it looks like you can uh, go walk on it. Here's a look at the bridge from the side. It's in really good condition. Keep in mind, this uh, it's what, over 150 years old? Get you a look underneath there. The little stream that it uh, goes over. That's yeah, pretty cool, huh? I'll go up inside and give you a look at, uh, at that real quick. Let's see, built 1870. I'll get you a look at it inside here. There's no more driving across it, but um, you can walk through it. That's yeah, pretty cool. Uh, I'm impressed with the condition it's being kept in. Uh, this you like to see. Window, you can look out at the stream. Here's a placard, real quick. Lynchburg, home of Ohio's only existing covered bridge that connects two counties. 
Ooh, this wind is cold. You guys can probably hear it in the camera. Anyway, yeah, it's really nice. You got a, a couple out there who are expecting having their picture, uh, picture taken. That's a pretty cool idea, in my opinion. Anyway, let's go look at some residential. Uh, let's see, because he lives, food pantry. Helping families face tomorrow. Got that here downtown. Uh, yeah. It's locked up, it looks like. Uh, they also have Dollar General. By the way, today is, uh, what is it, Monday. We're into the third week of March. It's a chilly day. It's about uh, 28 degrees Fahrenheit. That's negative 2 Celsius. And like I just uh, said earlier, the wind, there's a brisk wind and it is ice cold. Anyway, uh, let's see. Let's look around a little bit more. Movie shop. Yeah, there's a long gone business. Well, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go street off Main. Uh, let's see what the houses look like. This town is almost 200 years old. Uh, you can see a lot of the houses may have been built early 1900s. A lot of wood frame homes. Uh, that's beautiful. Got a handful of newer modern homes uh, mixed in, like that one. Alright, let's see. Uh, this is the only gas station I can find. $3.29 for a gallon of gas here in Southwest Ohio. And they've got a bit of a market there. Got a few groceries in there as well. So they've got two places here to buy some uh, groceries, food items. That is pretty awesome looking, isn't it? Uh, back in time stove shop. All right, well, I think I'm done here. I've shown you a lot of the town. I'm heading out right now to the next town. And also, I've had uh, subscribers and viewers ask to see a little bit of the area in between towns. So I'm gonna start doing that as well. Anyway, so on to the next town. Now, this is something that is a blast from the past, am I right? For some of you, I'm sure this brings back memories, places like this. Wow. It's open too and operating. Small town America. Uh, from the old days, you know? When many of us were kids. That was a common sight then. Just don't see it anymore, sadly. All right, everyone, I am in the town of Hillsboro. Uh, I'm already in residential, about a street off the downtown, but I will get there. Let's see, this is a city, according to the state of Ohio. 6,500 people here. That's peak population, too. It's a never lost population. Uh, some of the numbers as I drive through here. Median age is 41. Gender breakdown, 55% female, 45% male. A number that sticks out is that 16% of the females here are widowed. Now there's the fire department. Many of you asked about that, so there it is. It's one of the reasons why I drove down here, is to show you that. Let's see, the race breakdown. 
89% white, 5% black, 2% Hispanic, the remaining 3% is other. I wanted to show you this uh, First Presbyterian Church here as well, right here on the corner. That is a beautiful building. Anyway, I am heading into downtown now. I'm going to get out on foot because uh, they've got a courthouse here, county courthouse, that I'm going to have to take a closer look at. Uh, so, yeah, here I am pulling in. There's the courthouse. That building is a work of art. I'm going to have to tell you about that. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll just park right here. So here it is, the Highland County Courthouse. This was built in 1834 and is the oldest operating courthouse in the state of Ohio. Look at that, almost 200 years old. And they still use it as a courthouse. I uh, see they got a couple other things here. In memory of the unknown dead. And they have this, uh, let's see, what is this? To the memory of the soldiers and sailors of Highland County, Ohio, who served in the Union Army during the War of the Rebellion. couple cannons here too. In honor and memory of all veterans of Highland County who served our country in times of peace and war and to those who paid this supreme sacrifice so that we might enjoy freedom. Their spirit, devotion, and love of country will be forever remembered. And uh, they've got it for several wars here. Revolutionary War, uh, the Civil War, World War One, World War Two, Korean War, Vietnam, Iraq War, Afghanistan War. Oh, that's really nice. Got some snow flurries are happening. Sun too, though. Anyway, they must have had some warm weather because look at the grass, it's green. <laughs> but not today. Uh, this is a downtown with a lot of character. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me. This wind is cold, cold. Woo! And it's blowing. But anyway, I want to show you this stuff. Barbershop. I've had people ask me to show them barbershops. Well, they've got an old-fashioned one here downtown and uh, there's a mural over here I want to show you Look at that old picture anyway uh, it's got a picture of bells at one time this town was one of the world's top producers of bells and uh, they still have a festival of the bells every year here in early July uh, this building looks like it's in great shape. Um, but look at the sign. Yeah, notice unsafe structure. Uh, in accordance uh, with the Ohio Building Code, you are hereby notified to cease work on this job. Persons are hereby notified to keep out. Wow. That's crazy. The building looks fine, but I guess it isn't. Interesting. All right, so here's some of the other numbers. Per capita income, 20,900 a year. That's about 400 a week. Let's see, median household income is 36,800 a year. That is a little over 700 a week. Poverty, 
poverty is high. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised. 27%. And for children 17 and under, it's 42%. Didn't really expect to uh, see that number. Crime is low. Uh, 14 incidents per 1,000 people. U.S. average is 23, so um, that's about half. All right, let's see, one other number. Median home values, 109,600. So uh, cost of living's pretty low. You can get a house pretty cheap here. That is a beauty. Um, let's see, turn down one more street. Um, yeah, I mean, beautiful homes. It's what it looks like everywhere. Uh, there's downtown straight ahead. Okay, uh, I think I've shown you enough here. Uh, let's head to the next town. Well, I'm on my way out of town. This snow, <laughs> it's intensifying a little bit. everyone I have arrived in Greenfield Greenfield Ohio now this town has um, bucked the trend of the past two it has actually lost population peak population was in 1960 there were 5400 people here and it was a city Today there are 4,200 people here, and so now it is a village. Some of the numbers as I head towards downtown. Median age is 39. Gender breakdown, 53% female, 47% male. Race breakdown, 95% white, 3% Hispanic, 1% black, 1% uh, other or mixed. Let's see, per capita income, 22900 It's about 440 a week. Median household income, 41300 a year. It's about 794 a week. Uh, as I head into downtown, I'll tell you there are a lot of historic places here. And uh, I'm going to show them to you. To the left right here is McLean High School. Uh, it is significant. So I'm going to stop there and tell you all about that. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and make uh, my way into downtown and finish telling you a few more things. Poverty is pretty high here, just like the last town. 27%. Children, 17 and under, 42%. Crime is low, though. Uh, I had to double check it. Two incidents, two per 1,000 people. U.S. average is 23. So what is that? Less than a tenth of the U.S. as a whole. Their crime. Uh, that's one of the. It's, this has got to be one of the lowest crime towns in in the country. Uh, let's see. I'm in downtown now. You can see it's beautiful. Let me um, go to a couple of the places I want to show you first, and then we'll take a look at some residential. Let's see, this is the Traveler's Rest Inn, built in 1812. I was hoping I could go inside, but it doesn't look like I can. Yeah, it's on the National Register. It uh, sets out right in front of the cemetery. 
Now across the street here is the Samuel Smith Tannery. That was built in 1822. And I'm driving through residential here on my way over to that high school. Beautiful homes. Now this building sitting here in downtown, I'm not sure what it is. This is not a county seat, so it's not a county courthouse. But it is beautiful. This whole downtown is. Let's see, I'm gonna head up to this uh, high school and uh, tell you all about that. Right, so here's this high school. Um, I'll get out here and talk more about it. Yeah, so this is the Edward Lee McLean High School, built in 1916. It was a gift to the city from a local industrialist. Of course, his name is Edward McLean. He invented quite a few things, including the detachable horse collar. Uh, the school has an indoor pool. It was the first ever built for a high school and uh, it is in use to this day and is the oldest high school pool, a uh, swimming pool that is in use in the United States. I would love to see the interior, but uh, I'm sure I'm not going to be able to. But it has like a lot of artwork, statues. Edward Lee McLean High School. Let's see what is Greenfield. Principally, there is the school. Yeah, focal point of community pride for generations. This high school was the gift of textile manufacturer Edward Lee McLean to his hometown. Designed by nationally prominent school architect William B. Eitner. School was dedicated in September 1915. Lauded as one of the most complete and state-of-the-art school plants of its time. Numerous sculptures, paintings, and other works of art are displayed throughout the school. Like I said, I would like to go in there and see it. The USA's first black-owned car company was founded here in Greenfield. It was founded in the late 1800s and initially they did horse buggies, you know, buggies and carriages for horses. But they moved into automobiles uh, in the early 1900s. The company was called C.R. Patterson and Sons, and uh, right now I'm showing you some of the cars that they built. Uh, they did pretty well for quite a while, but uh, finally in 1939, they had to uh, close the shop down. They went out of business. Sadly, none of the cars that they built, the ones that I've just shown you, are in existence anymore. Not only would it be great if there was a couple in existence for history's sakes, for a museum, man can you imagine <laughs> how much they would be worth? A lot of money. Man look at this church. This wasn't even on my list of things to see here. I just uh happened to drive by it. Wow, that is impressive. Greenfield First United Methodist Church. That is a beauty. Well, let's see. Uh, do you guys know the song? Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. Do I have that good country twang? That song by Johnny Paycheck. Uh, well, it was by Johnny Paycheck. Anyway, Johnny Paycheck was born here. This is his hometown. So there you go. They've got a famous person from here. Anyway, back into downtown I go. Uh, let's see. I'm going to look around for a little bit. Look at that Zenith Color television sign. That is an antique worth some bucks. Perfect for my man cave. <laughs> I 
beautiful downtown. Yeah, a lot of the uh, town looks just like this. Like the last town, beautiful two-story homes. A lot of intricate woodwork, great porches. Just love houses like this, like these here. It's really nice. Oh boy, they got some stuff there. But not as much as across the street here. Now this is a lot of stuff that somebody has. Hmm. Now is that a house? Let me take a swing around and take a look here. Yeah, that's a house. A real small one. It might be too cold for a cat on this trip, guys. I'm still looking. It's still what? Let me look at the temperature. Yeah, 32 degrees outside, so uh, that's pretty chilly to have your cat outside. That is zero Celsius, by the way. Well, all right, guys. Uh, I think I've seen enough here. Going to head to the next town. Right, everyone I am in Wilmington Wilmington Ohio founded 1810 populations 12,600 that's peak population let's see uh, gender breakdown 54% female 46% male I'm gonna turn on the street and head into downtown Let's see, median age, 36. Here's the race breakdown. 87% white, 4% black, 3% Hispanic, 1% Asian, and the remaining 5% is other. Uh, per capita income, 24,400. It's about 470 a week. Median household income, 44,500. That is $856 a week. Now this is the county seat of Clinton County. There's the courthouse. Beautiful, isn't it? Built in 1915. I'll get a closer look at it in a minute here. Finish driving through downtown. Checking it out. It's beautiful though, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice. Let's see, a couple other numbers. Poverty, a little high, 22%. Children 17 and under, it is 32%. Um, crime is surprisingly high. 31 incidents per 1,000 people. Uh, U.S. average is 23, so uh, that's higher than U.S. average. Uh, broke it down a little bit further. Violent crimes, 2.4 per 1,000. U.S. average is 3.9, so violent crime is lower. Property crime is 28 per 1,000, though. U.S. average is 20, so that's where a lot of the crime is, property crime. Yeah, I want to see this Murphy Theater. Absolutely for sure. 
tell you about it, more about it in a second here. Show you a little bit more of downtown. It is something to see, isn't it? It's beautiful. Uh, let's see, there's that county courthouse again. Greek Revival. You can totally see that. Um, yeah. Takes its cues from ancient Greece. That is a beautiful building. Now here's a closer look at this downtown. Much of it is on the National Register. Probably no surprise. Uh, I specifically wanted to take a closer look at this theater. The Murphy Theater, built in 1918. I had told you about this area being heavily Republican. And uh, Michael Moore did a documentary uh, called Michael Moore and Trumpland. And basically he just did a one-man show in a theater. And this is the theater that he did it in. And he intentionally did it in deep red territory uh, because basically it was about him promoting uh, Hillary Clinton to be president. And uh, it really, I haven't seen it, but from what I understand, it didn't really knock Trump that much. It just said Hillary would be the better president. So he came to deep red country, specifically here in Wilmington, Ohio. And, uh, you know, he just pressed the point that he thought Hillary would be a better president than Trump. And uh, even though he didn't want to vote for her, or he didn't want her to be president, he wanted Bernie. He said that Hillary would be better than Trump. Basically, that's all it was. And um, interestingly, additionally, of course, it's in Clinton County, which is uh, where Wilmington is. It's the county seat of Clinton County. Now, of course, Clinton County is not named after Hillary or Bill. It is named after George Clinton. He was uh, the Vice President of the United States under two different presidents, Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. Now, another thing I want to show you here is the General Denver Hotel. It is named after General James W. Denver. He was uh, an adventurer, politician, soldier, lawyer, and a scoundrel, as far as I can tell. <laughs> God, the wind's kicking up again. Um, I read some of, some of uh, the information about him. He was a territorial governor of Kansas for a while. Uh, in 1852, he killed well-known newspaper editor Edward Gilbert in a duel. In a duel. Boy, things were different then. Even more interestingly, shortly thereafter, he was elected to the California State Senate. So, uh, <laughs> what a colorful character it sounds like. Yeah, General James D. Denver. And, and by the way, just in case you're wondering, yes, the city of Denver, Colorado was named after him. Anyway, it's freezing out here, so I'm gonna get back into Bronco, show you a couple more things. All right, this is the campus for Wilmington College, founded in 1870 by the Quakers. I felt like I should show you that real quick. Let's see, uh, I didn't give you a median home values yet. 124,900. As I cruise down a residential street towards downtown. Uh, it occurred to me when I was on that campus that perhaps the elevated crime rate, specifically property crime, might be because of college students. That would make sense. Now, uh, they have, or at least they used to have, a banana, uh, banana split festival here every year because a restaurant owner here claimed that he invented it in 1907. And he may have actually thought he did, but turns out some guy in New York made the first one in 1904. 
But they still had the banana split festival here for a few years. I think COVID killed it though. That's what I'm reading. Uh, let's see, they do have another festival here. The Clinton County Corn Festival. It's a pretty big deal. And uh, it celebrates agriculture in the area. That's a very quaint, beautiful town. A lot of great old architecture here. Uh, there's downtown again. Yeah, lots and lots of beautiful homes here. Uh, look at this red one. It's caught my eye. Isn't that something? What a beautiful house. Yeah, look at this one over here. Huh. And that is someone's house, I think. Beautiful. There's just... <laughs> Honestly, uh... Street after street of homes just like this. This is the whole town. It is, it is impressive. All right, everyone. So that's going to be the end of this video. Going to head up into Dayton next. Now, like Gary, Indiana, Dayton in the 60s suffered a massive uh, loss of jobs due to the manufacturing collapse of the area and a huge loss in population. So, will it look like Gary? Well, we're going to find out. That video will be up next.